Good. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, when I was approached by a legal, uh, one of the leading educators in Colorado to provide legal representation to these students, um, he asked if I was ready to get into some good trouble. Well, um, I've been a vocal advocate for racial justice for my entire adult life. Uh, and since I'm 53, that makes me pretty old. Um, completely unrelated, I've been an intellectual property lawyer for over 25 years. And I actually never thought it would happen in my career that both of those things would come together in a case, but here we are. So let me officially introduce myself. Um, my name is Jeffrey Cass. I am a partner at the national law firm of Lewis Brisbois here in the Denver office. Um, I'm also an author, uh, writing mostly on racial justice issues, and I represent these students uh, in the lawsuit against the Denver public school system. In the book of Proverbs, King Solomon gives some great advice. He says, teach your children according to their way. He doesn't say according to our way. He says according to their way. And as parents and teachers and educators and school systems, we are to support their passions and their paths and to support their proclivities and where, what type of people that they are and where they want to pursue in life. And rather than taking that advice, the Denver public school system has chosen not to support their students. Um, we, are, we are here today because these courageous students, in the wake of the tragic uh, incident involving George Floyd, his murder, uh, these courageous students decided in this very building to create um, an idea around a podcast. Uh, they had heard that you know, the, the signs, no justice, no peace, with N-O, no justice, no peace. And they said, in order to have no justice, no peace, we have to K-N-O-W, no justice, no peace. And so they created that phrase right here in this building. And they created the concept of the podcast in this building, and they created content. Now, of course they got guidance from their principal, of course they got guidance from their school, they got guidance from Brother Jeff. They got guidance from a company called H Soul that helps with podcasts. They got guidance all over the place, but it was their creation. It was their concept. And on July 4th, 2020, on Independence Day, they launched their first podcast, No Justice, No Peace. We should be standing in awe of these teenagers rather than, um, than suppressing them. So, Everything was actually going along relatively fine, and then in August 2022, just last month, the Denver Public School System, using a lawyer from out of state, no less, filed trademark applications with the United States Patent and Trademark Office for, you guessed it, no justice, no peace, saying that they had been using this podcast and this name continuously since they actually got the dates wrong, which shows that they wasn't theirs, but they said they've been using it since 2020. Um, and we sent them a letter after this happened. I sent them a letter. It was an aggressive letter, no doubt, but it was a letter that gave them two choices. Do the right thing and just transfer, you know, withdraw these applications, acknowledge that these uh, young, growing adults, uh, that this was their trademark and their podcast, and frankly, I even said, listen, we would love it if you also did a podcast. Just There's 177,000 words in the English language. Choose a different name. And if you, we've been waiting for you to do racial justice stuff, so go ahead. Do a podcast. But their response, I said, or the other option is we're going to sue you. So they actually wrote me back. Not only did they not agree to give back the name to these students, they threatened me personally, with sanctions, which in legal, in English, means they uh, are saying that they plan on going to a judge and having him sanction me and uh, say that I had no basis whatsoever to file the lawsuit. I can tell you in 26 years of law practice, I maybe get a crazy lawyer that does this once in a blue moon. This just doesn't happen where lawyers just threaten that. They also threaten to go after the students for legal fees. Um, these are high school students and college students now. I mean, and, and then on top of that, they threaten to sue these students if they use the name No Justice, No Peace. That is the choice that the Denver public school system chose in response to just asking that their name be given back. 
Now, I want you to imagine an art student in the Denver public school systems. I went to an art show at East High School, and there was these paintings. And some of these students painted their paintings in the East, in the East High School. They used their canvas. They used their paint. They might have even got some guidance from their art teacher. Imagine if Denver public school system started saying that they own all this art. Imagine a musician who records something in the Denver public school systems on a song that they wrote, but he used microphones from the public school system and he got guidance on, oh, maybe you should go a little higher octave here from the teacher. Imagine the Denver public school system when that song goes viral and is on Spotify, they said, oh, no, no, you gotta pay us royalties, that's our song. That's essentially what they're doing here. Even in MLK, there are students today that create their own jewelry on machines at the, at the school and sell them. Imagine if Denver public school system started saying, no, no, you need to pay those profits to us because this is ours, you did it with us. You used our guidance, you used our teachers, you used our equipment. That's not how it works. I mean, the bottom line is the students created this brand, the concept and the podcast, and because DPS would not resolve this amicably. We chose to file a lawsuit, and I can tell you I've been trying lawsuits to juries and judges for 26 years, and if it needs be, we will take this all the way to a trial. Um, and we will not have the students intimidated by DPS or threatened anymore. It's just not gonna be tolerable. Um, and we, we, re, we do reiterate that we welcome DPS to go ahead and do a podcast, just give back the name, and they can proceed with whatever podcast they want. Now, I'm not at liberty to discuss every part of legal proceedings uh, to the press. However, I do want to open it up for questions for either me or the students here and former student um, that all were involved in the creation of this name and podcast and concept, and I w we welcome any questions. Jeffrey, I got a question. As you know, there are So if the students had been employees of IBM and they had created a new type of computer or new software, they would be 100% right. IBM would own those, that software or that computer. But these are students. I mean, most DPS does not have a policy, but most universities have a policy that says that the students actually own the work that they create. So uh, I, I think they're wrong on the law. These are not employees and uh, these students created it and aside from even the legal component of it um, it's it's really just a bad policy to have altogether anyway but i think they're wrong on the law is there any legal precedent for this there isn't a lot of legal precedent on this because most this usually happens in the college context um, and like i said almost every undergrad has a policy that the students would own the podcast um, so DPS not having a policy uh, or creating one now contrary would be against how educational institutions handle this. Um, there are, I'm not at liberty to really uh, cite cases right now, but there are uh, some cases that would indicate that we're still on the right side of the law. We are not aware of any cases um, that suggest otherwise. A question for any of the students. Um, can you tell us how supportive DPS was of No Justice, No Peace when you all uh, created this platform. I know that it has gone um, international, national, CNN. You've been heralded um, around the country and around the world. What type of support did you get in terms of um, no justice, no peace from the administration of DPS? Um, I can begin. I will say that we have had selective support from specific um, employees of DPS, such as Tay Anderson, and many employees who have since been um, either fired or are no longer employees of DPS. But I would say right now, at the current higher level of DPS, including the superintendent, uh, many people who make large-scale decisions in DPS, and just as a whole, when we were going through things like being on CNN, being on the Today Show, you know, being invited to speak at the White House, which is an incredible honor we were bestowed, um, at the White House, nobody was on the Zoom. Whenever we were um, interviewed by the news, DPS never promoted it. Um, we rarely received personal congratulations. So I would say throughout this entire process, through our struggles and our successes, the support from DPS has been very selective. And I would say it's even very representative of the situation right now, that as soon as we decide that as young black women we want to own our content, we want to have, obviously, ownership of our own name and something that we've done a lot of hard work 
blood, sweat, and tears in, they now have a problem with us owning our own brand. Um, I just see it's very representative of how they've chosen to support and not support us as long as it benefits them. So that's why I have to say on that. What is and if I may piggyback off of Kalia, I just want to say that most of our support did not come from DPS. It actually came from our community. We got support from Brother Jeff. We got support from H Soul. We got support from a lot of community leaders. And they were the ones who support us through creating our resolution, through us having big gigs on media. That's really all the support we got. And then just to add to what both of them just said, um, it's actually pretty surprising whenever we would come in a space with people or employees from DPS that are like higher ups, they didn't know our names. Like I would say 90% of the time knowing who they were, you know, coming to see the work that we've been doing and like the work that the equity department in DPS is literally getting paid to do, we were doing and we would sit down at tables with them and they don't know our names. They don't know our work. And I feel like that's really disrespectful and it represents how they actually felt about the work that, that we're doing. And so, like Kalia is saying, for them to now all of a sudden want to be entitled to that work and feel like they're going to put the same value and sentiment that we put into it is, I would say, false. What do you think this message does of what they're doing to you, to other students in DPS, in terms of trying to show a mission? Um, I would say because while we've had the podcast, we've actually had the privilege of being able to meet other student activists in DPS and across the country. And I feel like a lot of the sentiment behind student activists is that there are systems that we exist in, you know, in schools and society. And a lot of times we don't have control of those scenarios. And instead of sitting back and accepting things the way that they are, we want to make change. We want to create a system for other students that can benefit from, which is exactly what we've done with our resolution and many topics we've talked about. And I feel like the message that DPS is sending is that, you know, they want to say we support racial equity, we support student initiative, we support et cetera, et cetera, all of their buzzwords they want to use. But when it comes to true independence, truly, um, I guess taking initiative outside of what they see as appropriate, that's when they have a problem with it. And I feel like it just shows an example of performative support of student activism, because being an ally to students such as us is not only supporting us financially, supporting us in our endeavors, supporting us basically through everything. And this situation right now, on top of the continuous selective support that they've given us, is just showing an example to students really everywhere, especially in DPS, that you can do what you want, but don't go too far. And what is really too far when it comes to changing the future and changing the life of not only ourselves, but other students. So trademark 101, there's no such thing as trademarking somebody, something. Um, when somebody uses a mark or phrase or symbol in connection with a service or a podcast or selling a product, if they're the first person to use that phrase or name in connection with that particular area, they are the ones who are the rightful trademark owners. So without filing anything, it's not like a patent where you need to file all this paperwork and then the government approves you for a patent. There's a trademark, the trademark rights vest, they come about through use. They had the first use, they win. It's plain and simple like that. Did they ever file for um, a trademark application? No, the, I mean, listen, these are not obviously people who have gone to college and have had to deal with lawyers like me. For, you know, they, they, wouldn't, they didn't even know to do that. Um, I can guarantee when this is over, we'll be filing for trademark protection. And then um, the resolution? Oh, in terms of whether we've had any diff additional discussions uh, with DPS, no. The answer is no, other than their threatening letter. That was the last communication. But they, but they didn't they meet a couple of weeks ago with, with students and so on? Um, let's see. So they did meet. They, they hastily brought together a meeting, and in that meeting, you know, they you can only ask a question so many ways. I know you all here know that, but they found lots of more ways to ask the question to try to, for them to admit that they own, that DPS owns the trademark and these wonderful young ladies did not uh, waver in that. And um, 
but that, that meeting was, um, you know, very distasteful, um, but th there was a meeting. Um, by the way, I want to mention something else. One of the things I offered in my letter is to go to a professional mediator, which they would have to pay for because they're expensive, but I, certainly not as expensive as this lawsuit, and I said, you know, we'll, we're happy to go to a professional mediator and see if they can come up with a solution, and that they also did not um, respond to. Coaching Coach with HTC Solutions. Uh, first of all, to the young ladies, thank you for standing. Uh, much love and support to you and to continue the fight. My question is, has DPS ever reached out to snatch the intellectual property of any other groups, or are you all, as black women, the first group that this has happened to? As far as we know, probably the first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, as far as we know, probably the first. Um, I know there's, as we said before, plenty of other student groups in um, DPS, including the um, podcast that's at Montbello High School right now. I haven't heard anything about them trying to steal their content, and I feel like in part of that is due to our success and obviously on a wide scale. Talking about our experience with black history comes with kind of talking about how DPS has not provided us our black history. So I feel like this is kind of an example of backlash for us expressing concern and general disapproval of what we've experienced in our education. So I feel like that definitely plays a role in us being, I'm pretty sure, the only student entity that's faced the situation before. We're going to take a couple more questions. And I, I'd also say I'm not aware, and I, I have done fairly extensive research to see if there were other examples. I'm not aware of DPS claiming art rights and music, music rights or any other rights of anybody else in the school system. Um, for the young women, what has this meant to you guys to have this podcast, to have this, this outlet? I definitely like to speak to this one. Um, I know for me, oh, this is such an emotional topic for me, but uh, like <clears throat> going through COVID and being at home all the time, like I know every single one of my peers was definitely sick of that. And it definitely does weigh down on your mental health a lot. And with all of the unrest that was going on and us, you know, growing up as young adults and you know kind of getting thrown into the world because i feel like i was thrown into the world um it, it was really hectic so being able to go to the podcast get to understand yourself get to understand your trauma learn new tools to navigate the world learn new tools to boost your boost your mental health boost your self-esteem you know empower your people fix some of the fix or at least address a lot of the inequities and like calling out the racial injustice that we're seeing, the social injustice, all of the injustices that we're seeing, it one gave us, like I know for me personally, it empowered me so much and it carried me through a lot of, a lot of difficult times. So um, I would say like without the podcast, I definitely would not be where I was. And I would also like to add that throughout a lot of, I would say probably 13 years that I spent in DPS, I learned more um, in the podcast about how to be more professional, how to present myself as a, a young black lady and be respectable and be responsible from the experiences in the podcast than I ever did while I was in school. And then I would like to go next. So I just want to say that growing up, I was always really a share to just well, afraid to just use my voice. And I felt like the podcast, this is something I really wanted to speak about. Something just wanted to know more about myself, people that look like me, just wanted to know my history. And actually this is all quite upsetting what DPS is doing now, because it's just showing that when we try to learn our history, there's so much backlash and it's not really wanting us to know our history. And this whole podcast for me, it was just feeling empowered, being able to want to speak to other students, want to see their experiences, if it was anything like mine, being a student who has grown up in DPS and who hasn't really seen any representation of myself, is just wanting to see if other students had the same experience and to ask why. I just had, I don't know how I forgot this, but when Donnie was saying, you know, learning more about yourself, um, I'm actually, my parents are from West Africa, so, they came out here and I'm like a first generation student growing up out here. So, um, you know, it definitely comes with like, a, it came with like a lot on my plate and you know, my parents always wanted me to succeed and stuff. But going to school, especially going to school in Denver Public Schools and going to schools that are predominantly white, 
it was a struggle, like so much of a struggle for myself. And this is where I know a lot of my passion for the podcast came from. It was like I would hide my identity. I would not tell people that I was African. At one point, like I didn't tell anybody my middle name until like fifth grade. I would tell people like I was Jamaican because I guess that was more acceptable than just being Cameroonian. Um, but like there's so there's still so many like students that I see today that are still fighting that same battle and fighting that battle with their identity and it's so sad to me because like through the podcast and learning about my history and being empowered by it I saw so much of the beauty in it so much of the resilience in it and so much of the things to where if I felt like every black student and student of color was able to see that resilience and beauty in themselves and in their, their culture, their ancestors, where they come from, they would feel, they would be able to carry themselves better. They would be better civilians in the society, you know? DPS wouldn't have to work so hard, well, they don't even work hard, but I don't even know, not do anything about the problems that are going on because those problems most likely would not exist. Um, I'm going to try not to get emotional, but for me, um, starting the podcast, well, I don't think we've mentioned it, but throughout our podcast, we talked multiple times about how um, our idea and how we became connected as students. Um, I was already friends with Donnie. I know Janelle and Alana were friends. And through the podcast, we got to know each other on a trip to Washington, D.C., Washington, Washington, D.C., going to the Museum of African American History and Culture. And that's one of the examples how really in the first time in our education, we got to learn our history, um, not watered down, not through a filter, just pure and raw as it is, the way it should be taught. And I feel like with this podcast, we created it while we were going through a time where we felt trapped, where we felt like we couldn't speak out during um, you know, during the summer with Black Lives Matter, seeing over and over again black people being brutalized, over and over again, seeing example after example of why black people are not valued in this society. And, you know, especially as young people, it's kind of almost mentally torturing to be stuck at home all day without a voice, without an outlet, without something to say. And I feel like as a result of this podcast, when we started it, we really just wanted to talk about the things that we've all either been silent about or wanted to speak about. And we never expected the level of success we got, but we're very grateful for it because we have a platform. We've had many great experiences. But I will say personally, it's been so emotionally gratifying. It's been so emotionally healing because like Donnie, when I was young, I was very timid. I wouldn't talk to most people. I would keep my opinion to myself because sometimes I felt like people wouldn't care. And I feel like, especially as a black girl, when society always already treats you that way as if your thoughts don't matter, your words don't matter, your opinions don't matter, or you should keep them limited, being in a space with other black women who share the same opinions as you, who care about your issues just as much as you, and we're having productive conversations of how to solve problems in our community, how to solve problems in our school system, it's almost ironic how us as black students, you know, learning about our history, learning how black people oftentimes our ideas are stolen, um, our history is stolen, all of our things are watered down, that now we're in a situation where our name and our brand and this work that we've continually built up is potentially being taken away by people who don't even care to learn our names, don't even care to financially support us, and don't care about us essentially as people. So I feel like with this podcast, there's too much emotional importance, there's too much educational importance to try to water it down and claim it as just a brand, just something for merch, just something to recreate and, you know, profit off of, it's more than that. And I think DPS just doesn't see that. Hey, black women. Um, yes, absolutely. Y'all are amazing. So my question is, y'all are in for a fight. How can community help you? How can we cover you? How can we stand in this with you? I think the simple answer would just be support. The community has always been supporting in us, and just to continue supporting us is really what we need right now. So that's really what we ask for. I, I also think it's so important right now to, you know, this is where people want to be allies. Now's the time to step up. And what we need is the community to write those letters to DPS for everybody to write to whoever their board member is to like they have to know that this is the wrong thing to do and this will not end until it gets right so now's the time to reach out to your friends I don't and just ask people hey we need your support here it's a real simple there's some 
honors black students who are doing what you want them to do in society, which is do well in school, go to college, do all those things. That's what you keep saying you want everybody to do. They're doing it, and now look what you're doing back to them. So now, you know what? Now's the time. Everybody, there's no reason for anybody in this country, and I've talked to friends of mine who are Republican, Democrat. I've talked to people in different parts of the country and told them what's taking place here. There's nobody, white or black, that thinks this is the right thing to do. So now's the time to rally the entire community and tell DPS to do the right thing. You know, I, my mother once said, I think you'd make a great president. I said, I'm not even running for PTA, so that's outside of my realm. I'm not going to be at a, uh, a board meeting, but if other people, you know, want to uh, attend that meeting and, um, and support these, um, these fine young women, then I'm not, obviously, I'm, I'm supportive. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> um, I also have to add that um, me and Donnie, we are still students of DPS. We're seniors and we're actually off campus at a community college because we fulfilled all of our high school credits but um many of us are in a very vulnerable position especially with obviously speaking out about dps um we're in a very vulnerable position when it comes to how much we can speak out which just goes further to show how silenced we are being in this situation on top of our brand trying to get stolen and i would just say when it comes to public appearances including this press conference we have to be very careful about you know how we show out because at the end of the day this is a legal battle and we want success and we just want dps to do the right thing without us extending our neck to get hurt you know hey, Tasha, hey. what's the um, current status of the podcast are you all still making it i'll just so the last episode was in march of 2022 uh, and um, there were some scheduling problems towards the last couple months of the school year so there weren't any podcasts in the that last april may the end of the school year um, the intent was to start back up, but um, DPS went ahead and changed all the social media passwords, and um, so there's n there's no real way to promote. They had built up kind of a little bit of a following, and now they would have to start at ground zero. So, you know, hopefully DPS will reverse course, and we can have this resolved within the next uh, very short time, so that they can get back to doing the podcast. Uh, Jeffrey, final question, and then our media can have uh, individual access to whomever for 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 a moment. I wonder what this is really about because right now we see that DPS is in, um, if there's an investigation about the discrimination of black boys, we're seeing a lot of, of, of schools that are being shut down. Um, there's learning loss. How does this rise to the level of importance to DPS in your mindset? And how much do you believe they are expending in terms of this lawsuit? Are they handling the lawsuit internally? I know you mentioned that there was some external um, hirings. How much is this costing us in the midst of all of these other, in my opinion, more important issues to address in DPS? Well, I'll just say there's two parts of this. I mean, I'll answer the second part first, which is DPS, um, as you would expect any company to do, they want to hire as good a lawyers as possible. So they have hired one of the largest law firms in the United States. Um, uh, they've hired somebody out of their Utah office from this law firm. This law firm has offices in San Francisco, New York, and LA, and one in Denver as well. Um, I also work for one of the largest law firms, so I'm not, this isn't going to be something I back down from. Um, so on that front, uh, yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. Their rates are higher than mine. Um, so uh, on the, what does this really mean, which is to me a deeper and more important question, to me this is a distraction because what, I want you to see how backwards this is. We want to give the appearance that we care about racial justice issues, so we're going to make a play for a podcast on racial justice issues and act like we've always been really in favor of racial justice issues. I'm like, but here they were already doing it. Um, and so there's kind of a backwards logic, and it, to me it's about trying to give this impression that they care, and it, I think there probably are people within DPS that care, but. It needs, they need to show up and care in different ways, which is when they raised $14,000 for black history books and they didn't distribute the books, that's not caring. So when they try to take the name, 
from people who are doing great things in the world. You know, our generation didn't fix things, so let's let somebody else try to fix it. So, you know, that, that's caring would be giving back the name and letting the, go for it, you run with it. I think it's a distraction to the real issue, which is addressing racial justice issues and equity and inclusion in this country. Do you all have any final remarks for, for, for the press or the community? Um, I can go. Um, I would say that just in general with, you know, this entire situation going on, um, I think it just highlights how important it is that when you see student activists, not including us, but also just smaller student activists, larger student activists, um, just know that there's always a struggle behind this, even before, you know, obviously, this lawsuit and before we were in conflict with DPS, um, there was always some type of struggle with, you know, us trying to contact from the district to be on the podcast and to explain some issues and give their opinion and give their side and multiply kind of extending the olive branch to at least try to make things right. They have continually ignored us. And the people who have reached out to us, such as um, Tamara Acevedo and Theo Shaw, who both previously worked in DPS, who were not rehired, um, many of the people within the district that were actually you know, accepting that olive branch and trying to make things right, they get punished for it. And it just so goes to that example that this is so much deeper than it seems. And as Jeffrey said, I feel like this is kind of a distraction because you know, with our podcast, we're just telling the truth. We're telling our experience as students, and we're inviting people who know what they're doing to come forward and also speak on it. And we're offering solutions, not just bashing DPS for not teaching us black history, not just saying we need more, more, more. We're discussing solutions. We're discussing different things. But the real problem comes when publicly you claim to support all these issues, racial equity, racial justice, student activism. But privately, you're ignoring our emails. You're firing. Um, the people who are actually supporting us. You are reallocating sources to different things that are, honestly don't matter. And in the end, you are not showing your true intentions to the public and to us. So I would say moving forward, if you're watching this, keep asking questions and don't, I don't know how to say this, but just go deeper. Don't believe the surface because as many statements as you want to put out, as many promises that you want out, if we're gonna see results, we have to keep pushing and we have to keep putting pressure. And ultimately that means making some people mad because some people don't wanna confront the fact that they're not focused on students. Some people don't wanna confront the fact that we haven't prioritized racial justice. And honestly, you should be uncomfortable. We said this from the beginning, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. This district has continually shown throughout history, even before we came along, that um, racial justice and black history was not something in the front of their minds. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you feel uncomfortable with us pointing it out, do something about it. Not just take away our name because we're making you uncomfortable. Um, I would just want to echo that in the beginning of this, we did say like we're willing to get in good trouble and very much necessary trouble. So with everything that's going on, us as a podcast and us as a passion and an identity, like our individual identities, DPS can't take that from us. Therefore, we will be continuing with our podcast. We will be continuing with all the goals and endeavors that we had set. And I feel like, honestly, this, I, I see this in the midst of all the negativity. I do still take this as a positive thing because if DPS is willing to go through as much trouble as to hire one of the number one law firms in the nation, then it's something that we're doing right. And it's something that, you know, we need to keep doing. So we're going to. And then I really just want to say thank you to Dr. Ross. Thank you to Brother Jeff. Thank you guys for allowing us to speak about this here today. And I just want to say we really, really, really need support. So please just continue supporting us. And speaking of support, can you just give a round of applause to everybody that you can't see, but there's a lot of support here. With that, we'll give you all access and um, individual access to whomever you'd like to speak to. Good job, ladies. Good job, ladies.